since I'm on kind of a little bit of a myth-busting kick here, I wanted to talk to you guys about something that I've studied exclusively for a very long time. Um, I may be an internet commando, if some people want to call me that, but I've gained a lot of information from a lot of different sources from a lot of different years over the subject that I'm going to talk about now. And there was a very reputable um, site that did an extensive test on what I'm going to talk about. And I've known about this test for several years and I've studied it. And I have went to a lot of different sources uh, looking for kind of the same information and it all kind of comes out to kind of the same information here. And that's going to be talking about cylinder gap and the velocity and power loss to the cylinder gap. Now, the first thing I'm going to say here is I'm going to give you some examples of some of the information I've heard over the years. Not information, but some of the stuff that people have said to me over the years. I do a lot of comparisons of revolvers and semi-automatics. And I have quote for quote heard what I'm going to tell you. And I've heard people say, well, the semi-automatic's better because you lose most of your velocity out the cylinder gap. I've also heard people say, well, you lose half of your velocity out that cylinder gap, or a high majority of your velocity out that cylinder gap, or there's a hundred different ways to put it, but people have told me time and time again how bad the revolver is because I'm losing so much of that energy out the cylinder gap and it's just wasted energy. Well, ballistics by the inch, I'm going to link this below. They actually did a study on this, and what they did is they took a variety of different cartridges and they tested it in this specific barrel they had. First of all, I'm going to tell you how much cylinder gap is pretty uh, common here. Um, Smith & Wesson, they're known for like a 6 inch gap, 0 .006, and I got my trusty little uh, gap testers here. This is a .006, and if I believe right, it doesn't fit. And I have a .004 right here. And uh, the point four barely comes through this thing. It's tight. So it's about a point zero zero four. Uh, same thing here with this. I think this one might even be a little bit tighter. No, it, it goes through barely. Barely starts to go through. And actually, uh, Taurus, Taurus revolvers are over having like a point zero zero two, which can be a good or a bad thing depending on what you want to accomplish with the gun. If you keep it totally clean and you don't fire it much and you only use it for self-defense, a .002 will definitely give you a little bit of an advantage with how much uh, gas you lose uh, over a .006 for instance. However, if you shoot that too much and it gets dirty, it can kind of hang up. So that's why Smith & Wesson, kind of like the way Glock makes their chambers unsupported in their automatic pistols, Smith & Wesson kind of backs their cylinders out a little bit so that if you get debris in there it's not going to slow the rotation of your cylinder. So enough with that. I'm going to start talking about actual information here about these cartridges and what kind of actual percentage of loss that you can expect. And I wrote some information down here so that's why I'm kind of looking down here. But for instance one of the one of the very common cartridges I wanted to take a look at was something that was that's a very common 38 special cartridge. Uh, it's a Corbon 38 special 125 grain plus P jack and a hollow point. Uh, they tested it in an actual LCR 1.875 inch barrel, same barrel length as this, and they got 951 feet per second. That sounds 100% right. That's about what you would expect on something like that out of a snubby. 125 plus P, 950 feet per second. So basically, the only thing that really lined up with that was their 3-inch test barrel. And with their 3-inch test barrel, with a .006 gap, they get a velocity of 970 feet per second. Then with a .003-inch gap, half the gap, they went from 970 to 985, or about a 2... 0.2 inch gain or 2.2 percent gain, something like that. Um, and then with the no gap, 1024. So 970 feet per second with 0 0.006 gap, a larger gap than most guns. 970 versus no gap of 1024. A velocity loss of 5.27 percent. 
Now I've looked at a lot of these different cartridges and that's very, very average. You do get some cartridges with far less loss and you get some with a little bit more. But on average you're talking about a 5% loss in velocity with a .006 cylinder gap. Uh, with a .003 which is actually larger than Taurus revolvers. That's only a 3.81% loss. So less than 4% loss with that. And that's with that particular uh, cartridge. Now I did actually find the information on this particular cartridge, the 38 plus PFBI load by Buffalo Bore, and they tested that in a 4 inch Smith & Wesson like this, but a 586, not a 686. They actually got a little bit less velocity than I chronographed it. I, I got like 9, or not 9. 11, I think it was 1150-ish. They actually got, um, what they get on here? They got 1101 with a .006 gap and 1096 in the actual gun. So they got about 1100 feet per second. 1101 feet per second with a .006 gap. 1101. 1122 with a .003 gap. 1155 with no gap. So Basically, 54 feet per second faster with a .006 gap versus no gap. So, what the percentage is, is 4.6% of velocity loss out of that .006 gap. So, less than 5% again. Interesting thing here is I looked up the 357 Magnum with the 357 Mag DPX out of this same gun again. They got 1259 feet per second. So it's kind of a light loaded 357 mag, but 1259, a 5 inch test barrel, they got 1297 with this 006 gap, 1326 with the, but they did a 0 .001 gap, not 3. And no gap back down to 1296. So versus no gap versus a 0 .001, they actually got more velocity with the cylinder gap versus no cylinder gap, which is pretty interesting. They got plus 2.26% when they gapped it off. And then when they went to 0.006 with that 357 mag versus 000 no gap, they had the same velocity, 1297, 1296. No loss. So basically, my whole point of this is, are you losing most of your velocity through a cylinder gap? versus an automatic pistol? No. Are you losing half of it? No. Are you losing a quarter of it? No. Are you losing 10%? No. Can you lose up to 8 to 9%? Yes, with the right loads. Um, I, I looked at a few different loads, I don't recall what they were, and they kind of started to get into that range. But on average, maybe three to five percent of your velocity loss is what you can expect with the with a point zero zero six gap. If you have a Taurus though, you pretty much expect two percent, two percent loss, something like that. These Smith and Wessons are zero point four, so you're talking maybe three and a half, four percent velocity loss and something like this. Three and a half to four percent. What that equates out to is, if you got a cartridge that suits, suits um, a thousand feet per second with no cylinder gap, or a pistol with the exact same barrel and chamber length, you're going to lose maybe 35 feet per second. That's pretty far off from most. So. I just want to explain that. I'll definitely put the link down below. You can take a look at this, but that's the common knowledge that's out there when it comes to cylinder gap, what you're actually going to be losing. And it's a lot less than what people say. So I thought I'd explain that, kind of give a rundown of some of this information. Uh, hopefully busted a few more myths. And as always, thanks for watching.